news. Good news, everyone! We are getting uh, class-specific packs. That's right. It's happened. I mean, it's here. We've actually technically already, uh, already yeah, and gotten. Yeah, you can buy it right now. <laughs> yep, you can. You can. Uh, for the first time ever, Hearthstone is offering class uh, a class-specific pack, uh, but only for Mage and only for a limited time, and it is $9.99 US. Uh, you get five Mage packs. It's a bundle, essentially. It's going to be on sale starting today and runs through March 4th. Does it seem like the best deal in the world? Like I'm at odds with how cool it is that they're offering a class specific pack and the fact that they're only offering one class and that it's $10 for five packs. This to me seems very much like they are testing the waters. And I was talking about this in our discord this afternoon. I, it feels like they're testing the waters to see if there's any interest in class specific card packs if you know like being able to buy only rogue cards or only mage cards or only warrior cards is something people would actually want to do which is why i kind of wish a few things i wish that it would last longer so that it wouldn't only be you know what a week um that it would be all potential classes so not just mage and then that it had happened maybe not right now because I know like me personally, when I log into my Hearthstone client, I think I have like 16 or 17 packs sitting there unopened because I have all the cards that I want and need for standard right now. Well, yeah, so, I mean, you are like the playboy of Hearthstone cards. I mean, you're just rocking I, I it totally in your Hearthstone I totally understand. Mansion. I, I, I completely understand that I am the Hearthstone 1% and I've had a lot of the cards for a long time. I am not a free-to-play player. Like, I get that. But I just, I kind of wish that even if, like, we weren't, I just, I wish it was at the launch of an expansion so that I could say, like, oh, I'm super psyched about insert this gimmick, insert this class here. I'm going to buy packs for that class so that I can start that deck right away day one and i think that that's why these packs cost more so you're paying ten dollars for five packs but because they're so targeted because that pool is so small you essentially are like guaranteeing what you're going to get out of your packs now not your rarities not exactly where your cards are but if i'm trying to build up my mage collection then what I'm going to want to do is like I basically I can buy my mage packs and get my mage cards instead of buying like full collection packs, getting neutrals or classes outside of mage, having to disenchant that stuff and then put it into mage cards, which then, you know, the, everyone knows the disenchanting exchange rate is terrible. So this is a much, much better way if what I'm trying to do is target a specific class. This is a great way to do it. And I understand where the pricing comes from because you're reducing the card pool so much. I, I completely understand this pricing. I just don't think that, like, I think it's a great idea in theory, but I don't think that this implementation is the best way to even test if there's interest in this. Because like, like I said, day one of an expansion, I would 100% buy class specific packs. I mean, I think that's Hands intentional. Down. I have to imagine yeah. that 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 has been considered, and the concern over how that would affect pack sales weighed. Um, it's just, it's all like I said. For me, it's like I think it's all of these things combined. I think I think it's okay if you want to test the waters with this, but I think it should be cheaper if you if you're if it's so limited um, to only mage. Like, go ahead, make it a little cheaper. Why not? Like. I, like at ten, I'm 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 not buying at ten dollar. If it was like seven bucks, I would buy it just to see what the opening animation is like. But at ten, I'm like, eh, I'm good. I don't I don't need to buy this. So um, well, yeah, again, like this is not something I'm gonna buy right now. But I don't want that to. And I mean, maybe I should just go and buy it because I feel like it's hard for me to vote with my dollars right now because this isn't how I would normally want to spend my dollars. Like this pack of five mage car or five mage packs this bundle is not something i want to buy right now but <laughs> i do want to encourage them to experiment in this space to not tie card packs specifically to like expansion only so i like the again i like the idea in theory and i want to see them do it so i want to give them that feedback maybe i should just tweet at them be like guys great well, idea i like well, I've this got news but for you. uh <laughs> 
they listen to the show. And All right. I well, good. <laughs> good idea, guys. But um, yeah, yeah. I think I, think I have some suggestions. I mean, I think it's it's a wide enough net. The the, the net they are casting here is uh, into a uh, a pond of millions of Hearthstone players. Uh, some of which I'm sure are quite interested in filling out their mage collection. Uh, so I'm sure they're going to they're, they're they're going to get some bites for sure. Um, mm-hmm. To play devil's advocate here, and also just to I always have the chance to give you a bit of a bruising for being such a one percenter. I don't think they're targeting the person that has 17 packs just sitting there that you forgot about because you literally have every damn card. So probably not <laughs> no, targeting. No, like, and that's what I say. Like, I don't need these cards right now. I don't want to buy these bundles right now, but I don't want them to think that that is me saying this is a bad idea because I think it's a good idea. And if it was implemented at a different time in the like yearly cycle, like shortly after an expansion has released, or I mean, ideally the same day that an expansion released, like if you gave me the option in the store, I promise I won't get confused. If you give me the option in the store to buy a generic like insert next expansion cards here pack or buy, you know, year of the blah, let's just use year of a dragon so i don't have to say blah all the time let's say here's a year of the dragon card pack that is for rogues i'll be like sweet i'm gonna buy that i want to try a rogue deck right off the start like let's go year of the dragon rogue pack like it's not too confusing it'll give me you know 10 options so the nine classes that we've got and then the the generic pack with the neutrals and the chance at any of the classes for cheaper like give me all of those options and let me allocate my money accordingly and uh, you'll probably end up with more money from me in the long run because <laughs> yeah i think there are times when i absolutely would buy this 100 percent. just not right now <laughs> i don't think i would be interested in class specific packs at all at the beginning of an expansion uh especially with pre-order like money savings and whatnot um but yeah whatever the case is like at the end of the day i do think this is cool uh, that they like this tech exists that it's you, you know, this is a pack that contains only mage cards and only mage cards from year of the dragon that is rad mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's everything else that i just find odd i'm like i kind of wish i could buy this for all the classes i kind of understand mm-hmm. again i still kind of understand the concern there because then you don't have people buying year of the dragon packs they're just kind of going through for their class that they're that they're interested in well but, but at I the same time like be. Yeah, and if people aren't buying Year of the Dragon packs, again, I think that's why there's a higher price tag on these class-specific packs, right? Like, True. you don't care if people are buying Year of the Dragon pack or aren't buying Year of the Dragon well, packs you know, if I, your mage bundles are more expensive, right? Yeah, I agree with that. I'm saying that it's, yeah. like, it's, it's the combination of all of the weirdness of this, like the limitation mm-hmm. plus the price plus how light this is. Like, it feels, I don't know. Plus a really tiny window. <laughs> have to imagine that there's... Some, there must be reasons. There's a graph and some people in suits with like, all right, we're still selling this many dragon packs and blah, 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 blah. We don't want to risk it too much. They must, there's an apple cart they do not want to upset is what yeah. I think is happening here. Um, but cool tech is really all I have to say about this. And this is the most I have ever even been remotely interested in discussing a store item. Um, but speaking of store items, Cadgar is back. If you want to make your Cadgar mage hero, uh, and there's a card back this time. Going to cost you $9.99 US. If you already have Cadgar, congratulations. You already have the card back now. It just, it just magically appeared in your in your collection. Which is so fitting because yep. he's a mage. More Dadgar <laughs> for you, everybody. Yep. Yep. Um, also, there's the six years of Hearthstone in-game celebration coming, which uh, where the hell was that? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm done with visuals for the video audience. Um, and to commemorate the uh, occasion, Hearthstone is putting on an anniversary event beginning on March 4th. Uh, it's going to bring special tavern brawls uh, and a new legendary quest line and logger rewards. So that's really freaking rad. So go check that out. Um, and yeah, that's basically our show for today. My goodness, that was a long one. Garrett just like deleted half a page of show notes, you guys. Peek behind the curtain. He was like, you know what? That's a show. Delete. That's that's it. That was a lot. It was a lot of battlegrounds. It was a Uh, lot. It was a long show. I get it. It was really funny. To the commenters of the official post going, where's the the standard rotation and Hall of Fame and burger, 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 burger. It's coming. And if like it's on schedule. If we look at previous years, 
goodness. Oh my God, Garrett. I wasn't even going to bring up that. No, no, I just but you're totally right. Like, yeah. Like if you guys are waiting for news about standard, first of all, we just got an influx of cards. So have fun playing your adventure and have fun playing with the new cards in your standard space. It's only just the end of February. This happens every year. I am glad that we got a super awesome Battlegrounds update to help bridge the gap between the end of the Year of the Dragon and the start of whatever we're getting. And I expect those announcements to happen alongside the Hall of Fame. All of that stuff like it always does at the end of the year, which is always around April. So we'll probably get announcements in March. So just chill out. Enjoy the update. Enjoy the fact that we're, I think we're getting an arena rotation soon too. Like just yeah, but that enjoy was... the Hearthstone stuff that's carrying us through the gap that we always have at the end of the year. <laughs> All right. So here, can I give you like a true peek behind like the curtain that is my brain? Yes. So what just <laughs> happened was I mentioned the six year anniversary and then I couldn't find it in the blog. It's actually right there by the, the oh. Jaina <laughs> image, which I was looking at while we were talking about the mage mm -hmm. cards. The mage packs, And I yeah. thought to myself, shit, I wasn't supposed to talk about that yet. Crap. I panicked <laughs> and that's why I deleted everything else. I'm like, crap, did they actually announce oh. the arena rotation? Because then suddenly I was really lost in the blog because it's actually one of the longest blog posts they've ever made and actually one of the most detailed they've ever put out, which I really enjoy. Yeah, they had dev comments. So yeah, no, I the feel arena... like we can't like emphasize that enough because that was amazing and I love the insight. Yeah. <laughs> the arena rotation is also coming on March 4th. Um, they're going to be rotating to con include uh, basic classic GVG, which would Savers of Oldham, Descent of Dragons, and Calicron's Awakening. But that's not coming until March 4th, so it's still a little ways out. Um, not too far out, though. Yeah, so. it's like that's next week, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, next Wednesday. A week today. Yes, because time marches on to claim us all. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that's what I totally thought. I accidentally mentioned something I wasn't supposed to talk about. Oh, I see. Yep. I, was, I was so surprised when half, the, half a page of show notes disappeared. Anyways, yeah, so that's what's going on in, in Hearthstone, you guys. But yeah, it has been a long show, though. I, I totally bought that excuse, Garrett. <laughs> it has been a very long show. What made me think about the comments is the fact that like this was an almost strictly Battlegrounds show. And we got quite a yeah. few com uh, compliments last week on your episode, Joss. I don't know if you saw them or not from people being like, man, I'm so stoked you're talking about you know Standard and Constructed again because there hasn't been as much of it. Um, and uh, I, to that, I would just say, like expect that to just kind of be like the the rising and falling breath of the angry chicken as we move forward. Like if it is a battlegrounds heavy week in terms of news and updates to the game, that's where we're going to put our focus. And the same goes for standard. And if it's kind of a regular week without major updates to either, we're going to split our time between the two willy nilly. But I mean, this was literally the biggest thing to happen to battlegrounds since it's period. Release. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, well, and I think that, I think that honestly, I, and I think I said this last week too, I blame Galacron's Awakening a little bit because our plan had always been, I might've actually said this in the in the patron discord. So if you guys aren't in there, that's where I apparently just splur all my thoughts. So if you're interested in my thoughts in between shows, that's where they go. But I think that um, I like, I really blame Galacron's Awakening because our plan for the show always was, you know, it's even why we pushed it to Wednesdays, like play the solo adventure, see how you like the encounters, get access to the new cards, throw them in some decks and play them. And there was just nothing that was that impactful until we had all of the cards out and were able to build that super cool dragon hunter. It was like, and week, that was like week the, one with Embiggen and Druid and then final yeah. week dragon hunter. Right. And so we were kind of expecting or hoping that there were going to be some really cool card uses and, and an evolving meta over that time. And it just didn't really play out like that. So it's not that we didn't want to cover standard. It's that there just wasn't as much standard to cover in terms of like new and exciting decks to play on ladder because there just wasn't really anything that was coming out of that um, influx of cards week to week that was worth really highlighting. So that was always our plan. We haven't abandoned standard by any stretch of the imagination. It's just that sometimes there's just more going on in Battlegrounds and they have been updating Battlegrounds so quickly that it's we've been able to kind of have this um natural flow to the show where it's like announcement of like patch nurse bus whatever coming to battlegrounds 
then, you know, it happens the next week and we're able to talk about what that's like. And then the week after we talk about the meta and then the week after that, usually we're getting another patch announcement. So it's been this really great kind of flow with the Battlegrounds content that we have never had with standard Hearthstone content. And we were hoping to kind of get that flow with Galakron's Awakening. And it just didn't really pan out that way because the cards that were released weren't quite as powerful as what is currently sitting from all of the rest of the cards that have released with Year of the Dragon. So, yeah. Yeah, we we still love standard. We're still playing standard. I mean, Garrett, like you're playing with that dragon hunter and just absolutely tearing it up right now. Um, so so I got back Wednesday. I think I listened to the podcast on Friday while catching up. And since Friday, I'm 29 and four with dragon hunter. It's right. It's a insane. great deck. <laughs> absolutely crazy i i also went and dabbled in mech paladin because you know they've got a shot bot now and pure paladin because yep. i've just been wanting to try pure paladin um no, just back to dragon hunter man not only is it <laughs> oppressively powerful i love how it plays it's great it's just it's yeah. just fun to play um but i feel kind of like a dick yeah yeah it's it can be a little it's a little bit of an oppressive deck and it's the only thing to come out of galakron's awakening so i mean we're still playing standard we're still thing. enjoying standard it's but thing. it's like, and big and druid yeah and big and druid yeah. came out of it um as in full force and i'm rolling over it with dragon hunter right now laughing maniacally <laughs> uh you know mech paladin got shot bot which is a notable inclusion it's obviously not a whole brand new archetype but you know there, there are things um i'm just trying mm -hmm. to save us some emails <laughs> like get your point <laughs> well yeah but exactly and so that's what i'm saying like it just it didn't have the impact that we thought it was going to so that's basically what happened with our like what we were expecting our influx of standard coverage to be and didn't really kind of end up playing out that way so uh yeah i mean i i'm kind of on the edge of my seat and super stoked for whatever our hall of fame and our rotation announcements are going to be like i'm right there with you guys and i'm still really really enjoying and interested in standard hearthstone it's not like i'm giving it up for battlegrounds i love playing battlegrounds but i'm kind of like straddling both worlds right now and really enjoying it and that's why i think the show has kind of evolved into what the show is now and i love doing it so i hope you guys love listening <laughs> I like it too. I didn't mean this to become such a meta discussion of our show, but it's a good talk. Um, I think it's a good talk because we've definitely been, ever since Battlegrounds has released, we've definitely gotten a lot of these questions about like the future of the show. Are we going to be Battlegrounds only? Like what's going on? No, definitely so, not. Yeah. No, no, 100% yeah. not going to be Battlegrounds only. Um, it's, it's just, we are living, breathing human beings. And sometimes we get a little more attracted to one aspect of Hearthstone than the other. Um, but yeah, no, we're going to continue covering all of it. Um, I've just been playing an Aston of Hearthstone lately, like a lot. It's actually hurting my WoW play a little bit. I was really enjoying <laughs> the latest WoW patch, and now I have fallen quite behind because of Hearthstone. Um, mm -hmm. So it's uh, this is just how it's going to go. Um, and also, like, it's just been cool. Like, while we're on the meta conversation, um, y'all got pretty quiet there for a little bit. We weren't hearing from a lot of people in any aspect of Hearthstone. And uh, now we hear from you a lot in regards to both Standard and Battlegrounds. Uh, and also just the future of the show, which I think is really rad. Uh, and mm -hmm. to me, screams good things for Hearthstone and the health of the game and everybody's interest in it. So if you want to write in, be a part of the show, we definitely don't have time for emails today, but keep them coming. TACpodcast at gmail.com. If you are a patron, you also gain access to the patron-only Discord. You can skip the inbox and write us directly there. Sometimes we're, we're there interacting with you in real time because uh, we also work during the day and would much rather slack off and talk to you fine folks about Hearthstone. So check it out, patreon.com slash TAC. We are now at the end of th this week's episode. Um, hey, if you dig the show, please do go check out the Patreon. Um, every little bit helps. I know everyone says that. It, we mean it. <laughs> we really do mean it. Uh, we have more $1 patrons than anyone else. You make up the majority. You are, you are the reason we get to keep doing this. You help keep the lights on. Thank you. So very much. So um, if you like the show, you want to support us at any level, we really appreciate it. Check it out. Patreon.com slash TAC. While we're thanking our patrons, uh, patrons, huge thanks to our producers, Declan H and Cheesy Bob. Thank you so much for the support, you too. And uh, if you want to catch the whole back catalog of episodes, you got some catching up to do. Maybe you, have, for some reason, missed last week's stellar episode uh, hosted by Jocelyn with uh, Jonathan Vigil from uh, the wonderful band, A Ghost Inside. Uh, also, Fate of Karma streamer 
uh, I cannot recommend it enough. I really, truly enjoyed listening to it. It was so rad um, getting to listen to a podcast that I'm usually on and get to just kind of take it in as a fan and also get inspired to be a jerk on ladder with Dragon Hunter. <laughs> so uh, if you want to catch back You're catalog, welcome. go to amove.tv or youtube.com slash amove.tv to find every freaking episode of The Angry Chicken ever. Uh, you can catch us live now on Wednesday nights. It's official. We're doing it on Wednesday from now on. Shit doesn't come out on Tuesday as much as it used to. Announcements don't come out on Tuesdays as much as they used to. We're just doing it on Wednesday from now on. It works out. Even though I'm tired because I get up early to do a show with a dude in England. Doesn't matter. We're doing it on Wednesday. <laughs> this is how we're doing it. This is how it's, it's going happening. on from now on. Join us at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Twitch.tv slash TV. Come join us in the live chat. Wonderful, fine folks. You know, it's a good place also to hang out. Like, you know, you got that 80 gold quest. You know that that message we all type to each other. Hey, who wants 80 gold? The A-Move chat is a great place to throw that in. I find somebody. But before we go, Joss, you do all sorts of other awesome stuff. Where can everybody find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Twitch. I'm at Joss Plays. That's J-O-C-E Plays. Um, nothing really crazy to talk about right now. Just uh, still doing Gamers In all the time. Um, we're talking a lot more like industry kind of news over there now. So uh, if you obviously... My playtime in general has dropped off a lot in the last uh, six weeks or so. So, uh, yeah, we're doing a lot more industry news, which has been absolutely fascinating, especially since we're coming up on a new console release this holiday season. So there's all kinds of crazy stuff going on right now in general gaming stuff. So if that's your jam, come and check out Gamers In. Yeah. Lots to say about Stadia being weird. But there are so many of those like cloud streaming services out there now. Like the NVIDIA one is actually really good. And the Xbox one worked surprisingly well. I was surprised. I was really surprised by both of those because Stadia was so bleh. <laughs> mm, I haven't tried any of the streaming stuff. I do know that uh, Xbox Game Pass will have my money forever because it's so <laughs> freaking good. Xbox Game Pass reminds me of the early days of Netflix streaming where it was just like, yeah. oh my God, this is the future. Um, uh, I just get to play so many more like non blizzard games because of my game pass, uh, thing like not sponsored at all, by the way. Uh, also I'm a little miffed. I missed out on a like $1 a month game pass sale that they had. I totally got screwed. Yep. Um, so I truly enjoy it. So <laughs> cause you're paying full price. That's how you know you like something. Yep. Love it. I, I have bought every Forza game ever. I haven't bought the latest horizon because I just have game pass, which means I just have access to it. So what's the point? Right. I love Forza. (laughs) I really do. And I have, I never get to talk about it. So, uh, Hey, if you nerds ever need a car nerd to come on and talk Forza, let me know. (laughs) Uh, folks, I'm Garrett art on Twitter. You can follow me on there. This podcast, all of the other podcasts that I do can be found at amove.tv. I just put out a brand new episode of wow killer. Tally Essen and I talked about who we think the best and worst characters are in wow lore. We did best main character, best and worst main character, uh, expansion specific character, pop culture reference character. And then we even, uh, put our own tunes under, under that, uh, (laughs) under under the microscope. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That went up literally this morning. So you can go get that wherever podcasts can be found. Wow killer uh also let's talk about star wars is returning next week covering the first two episodes of clone wars's final season that i never thought we were going to get so mm. so excited it's like my favorite star wars thing ever and i love star wars so that's saying a lot that's gonna wrap it up for this podcast everybody thank you so much for hanging out hope we burnt a good chunk of your work day or whatever you're doing while you <laughs> listen to this uh, maybe mowing the lawn which my mower is so loud I don't know how you do that. Maybe I need to get it looked at. But until next time, job's done. Job's done.